Here's to the guys with the cool podcast about weather and dicks and getting old fast. Interesting, all Canadian brew is waiting for you. Get it now, you're not real fans. Interesting, all Canadian brew. You know what to do. Interesting for the beach or the dock. Going dance, got a big cock. Interesting. Yeah. Hubble and Fred's interesting all Canadian ale available now with free delivery anywhere in Ontario. Order yours today at stonehooker.com. Humble and Fred's interesting all-Canadian ale, Stone Ho- Stonehooker Beer Tasting at Pizza Party on Patio, Wednesday, August 7th at 7. <laughs> wow, I've read that for a week. Pizza Party on Patio. Yeah. They're having a pizza <laughs> yeah. party on the patio. Yeah. That's going to be great. It's going to be a good time for everybody. Mm, uh, I got a call. time had by all. I good time c- had by all. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting to call the get, get car, get the get the get the guitar guitar get the guitar get the guitar get the guitar. You bring okay. the guitar up? Well, not me. We ha- no. There's a dude oh. that we know who's a professional entertainer. That uh, I'm going to see if he'll come and uh, play. When you're coming to the lake, you mean? No, no. Oh. At our pizza party. Oh, at the pizza party. <laughs> we were just talking oh, about. <laughs> <laughs> now Dan's frozen. Dan, you're warbling and you're frozen. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Dan, your uh, Zoom connection is all, all fucked up. All right. Yep. All all we heard was it's not that big of a okay. deal. Yeah. Um, you were warbling. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking okay. about the pizza on the patio party, and uh, you somehow conflated that with uh, me coming to the trailer and bringing up uh, a guitar player. <laughs> right, <laughs> which would be weird. It's like, hey, Dan, I'm here for the weekend, and oh, I brought my, own, I brought somebody to accompany us around the campfire. <laughs> yeah. Well, at first, I thought it was you're going to bring your guitar for the campfire. You know, people do that. Oh, I know. Yeah. Except, oh, uh, there wouldn't yeah. there be a buzz in the trailer park? Oh, tonight by the fire, humble Howard. Yes, humble Howard <laughs> so, will be performing. That's right. The song Silings. Mm, yes, yeah, some of his uh, favorite campfire <laughs> That's right. tunes. Come here, Howard, play one third of a song that he heard once. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, we're talking about somebody coming to entertain the people. If you want to uh, join us on the uh, 7th of August, we'd love to have you uh, email us, Humble and Fred, at humbleandfredradio.com. Uh, Just put a, a subject line beer tasting. And, uh, you know, there's no limit. I mean, don't bring 40 people, but, you know, you want to bring four. Uh, that's fine. It should be a good time. We're going to have a... <laughs> yeah. Already, it looks like a, uh, a pretty good crowd, so it'll be festive. Yes. Um, well, we, we've got to start the show because it's been a few days since we've been together and, and many things have happened, including... I don't even. I told the story to Lumbee, and as soon as I started telling him, he's like, "Oh, yeah, I, here we go." But uh, on the show today, uh, we'll talk about, uh, of course, all sorts of stuff, including another Howie G encounter that went horribly wrong through no fault of his own. Oh no, it's never your fault. <laughs> you sound like Trump. Oh, well, yeah, well, and you know, it's never your fault. It's not my fault this time. Well, okay. All right. Uh, some of it was my fault. <laughs> there was TV See, I've watched, I, I've watched these, I've watched the evolution of you over the years because in the early years, it was always your fault. Oh, no, exactly. It was, all it was my always fault. your fault. And then it became sometimes your fault. And now it's never your fault. Okay. Well, in this particular case, I will be taking some responsibility for what took place, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I know. I see. I, I said the same to Lemmy. I said, Fred's going to love this. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that's all coming up on the program, which will start now. 
this episode of Humble and Fred is being broadcast to the world from our state-of-the-art Humble and Fred studio in Toronto, from our Brampton facility featuring an inviting pool, and from a lakeside trailer in the Coorthas with the Dennis Duranis bust. I'm Dan Duran, broadcasting live from the Bill Chaput Zoom Theater and brought to you by the Retirement Sherpa, the Chambers Plan, Boron One, Bodog, and Lender's Choice Mortgages. And now here are two men who have pondered the old saying, there are decades where nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happen while sitting on the toilet. It's Humble and Fred. That's very true and profound there, Dan Duran. Very well done. Uh, everyone's heard of BioSteel. That's that sports uh, drink. The guy that uh, founded that has a new product, and uh, he's going to be on with us today. Uh, his name is John Salenza, the founder of BioSteel. He knows a thing or two about and And, and what a great uh, time to have someone like that on. Uh, as we are uh, just days away from the Olympics. But a lot of people, it's a category of uh, drinks, this whole, it, it's like, I, you know, I can't remember when I first started seeing BioSteel at, uh, they were giving it out at golf tournaments. But now he's come up okay. with a new product and mm-hmm. uh, it's called Quench. C-W-E-N-C, Quench Hydration. And uh, we're going to find out why you should be drinking it. Uh, That's coming up in another uh, episode of uh, Building Toronto's Skyline with Nick Ines. He'll be here with us today. And uh, so much to uh, go over, as Dan just mentioned. So much has happened. You know, it seemed like a year ago that Trump got shot in the ear. Yeah, now there's some question whether it was actually the bullet that got him or some fragments of plastic or something. Not that it matters. It was still a, an assassination attempt. Oh, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, there, I'm, I've seen that. There, I can't tell if it's a conspiracy or it's because, I don't know, like a lot of, I saw that one thing online where they said if he actually got shot in the ear his, it, with a bullet, it would have torn his ear off. No, I know. And the thing, p- people, because... It was an assassination attempt. You know, most decent people don't want to go there. But, of course, he's already accusing Biden of faking his COVID, his case of COVID. Uh, But again, he was just a disgusting, despicable excuse for a human being. But we know that. So, yeah, I I mean, we have so much to get to, including Mm -hmm. the Biden quitting and uh, all the, you know, we have a whole Trump section, you know, like. He was going to be, of course. He was going to be a kinder, gentler, bringing America together. Not according to the tweets that I'll be reading you. The man's insane. Oh yeah, like he's not. He's not all there. And that's the one good thing. And I know we're not talking about it now, but the focus. What bothered me over the past couple of weeks? It was, there was too much Joe Biden talk and not enough Donald Trump talk. Like, yeah. The focus focus was on. You know, Biden, the cognitive problems, we weren't talking about the mental illness problems of Donald Trump. Well, now we can do that. Not only that. Plus, you know what? He's an old fucker. He's too old to run. Well, that's it. That, that's what yeah. the uh, Democrats have done. It's 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 yes. Ener- it's energized. You know, what we're talking about uh, Joe Biden step down. Uh, mm-hmm. What it's done is it's energized the Democrats because now Donald Trump is the oldest person to ever run yeah. for president. So let's get after it. No, I know. And the Republicans, their response to that was, wait a minute, you had this guy, Joe Biden, now that he's gone, all of a sudden age matters. Mm -hmm. And the best response to that I heard was, that's politics, which is a which is says it all. Right. Well, and and our and and what they should say is, yeah, our guy was too fucking old and he dropped out. When's your guy going to drop out (laughs) the fucking mental case? Anyway, so there's that Uh, that's coming up. And uh, we mentioned our August 7th patio party. That's going to, I'll mention it again later if you want to join us. Dan, will you be joining us for the patio party? Because several people would love to he meet has you. To. Of course. Yeah, I'll be there. It'll be a lovely day. Uh, a venture forth from the, uh, from the lake mm-hmm. to the, uh, to the you know, 
populous areas. Can't you have to, Dan. <laughs> that's that's like a sub theme of all our uh, entries. People want to meet Dan Durant. I love how, I love how Dan speaks. He's, and most people would have just say, "Yeah, I can't wait till we get get a chance to come back to the city." Not Dan. Dan, uh, it will be a great opportunity, fellows, to go to the populous areas. Uh, will you want Will you want to stay at my house that night? I don't know. Maybe I haven't thought that far ahead. That's a long time away from all here. Right. Just let you know. know. It's always available Maybe. for you. Maybe. We'll We've see. also had a couple of emails from people saying, you know, I'm somewhat overweight. Should I come if Dan's right. there? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What? Somebody was like, I don't, I, I, I don't want Dan to make fun of me. I'm fat. I don't want to get I, poked with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, I would never do that. Dan, never, Dan just these are things. Dan has his fat herder stick, his, his fat herder stick, and he just herds them off to a section. <laughs> well, that's what Dan said. Most parties have VIP sections. I demand <laughs> fat sections. <laughs> He's got one oh, of those, that's one of those long sticks that sheep herders use. Just get over here, over there, <laughs> away from me. Get to some place where I don't have to look at you. Yeah. Didn't we have an event once, Howard? And in retrospect, it was a bad idea. We had Humble and Fred's VIP section or something, and we sat in there with a select group of listeners. And then in retrospect, we thought that was a very good idea because a lot of people who really like us just had to stand there and watch us be served. You know, there was long, <clears throat> it may have been at Fort York or something, there was long lineups for beer. Oh, and yeah, food yeah, and yeah. People. That's right. And we're in this VIP section being served. And in retro- retrospect, we're thinking, <clears throat> maybe that wasn't the best thing. Uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, we should have been out there with the troops. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that people uh, could see But you live I, and learn, I eh? don't think people could see us, though. I don't think, like, we, were, we weren't in a section. Oh, I think they fr- could. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe. Oh, I think they could, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's um, the problem. So, yeah. why don't we get to the uh, this little encounter... Mm-hmm. That I had. Okay. Um, I'm getting a message here that says your internet is unstable. Is that yeah. my internet or yours? Yours, because you dropped out a couple of times. Dan didn't. I could see him moving. I'm going to switch internets here. Hang on a second. There we go. Now we're back. You guys hear me okay? Okay. Uh... I switched internets. Internet. Word heat. Yeah, you're good. That'll, okay. good be, that'll be good for Howard when he comes on the weekend if it's really hot. He'll be air conditioned in his own private room. Uh, yes. I missed, but guys, I'm sorry. I switched uh, to our Humble and Fred uh, internet down here. And so I missed about the last 30 seconds of uh, you guys. What were you talking about? Uh, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I, I've got a heat pump, which is basically an air conditioner. Four. And I said, you coming on the weekend, right. you have your own bedroom now, a luxurious, nice bedroom. And if it's hot, you'll be cool as well. Luxurious, Howard. Luxury. Well, I yeah. listen, I'm looking forward to uh, hanging out with you guys. And uh, I, I was, I, I, listen, I stayed at the hobo trailer many times. I've slept outside. I've uh, slept inside. I, uh, when I used yeah. to drink, I knew that at the end of the night we'd get all drunk, and then there Dan has that used to have that cabinet with the really hard liquor, and I'd go in there and just start, sh- you know, taking shots. Would you really? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Serious? oh yeah. No, I'm asking you. Are you serious? Have I opened up that cabinet? That little, the, the one above the yeah, uh, taking yeah. shots. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, wow, yeah. how times have changed. The whole, <laughs> the entire Patterson clan will be there. They're looking forward to it's seeing. Gonna, you. Uh, it's going to be a ma- you know what? It's going to be magical. Both my kids, my grandkids, my son, everyone's going to be there. Even doll. <laughs> Even doll. Uh, you know, I haven't uh, spent much time with your grandkids, and uh, but the little you know moments I've spent, you know, taking Johnny out, hitting golf balls, and mm-hmm. it will be. I'll just be there as a uh, interested observer. I'm just going to observe. You know me. I'm very quiet and uh, don't like to uh, say much. Yep. Dan, will you be uh, Dan? Um, yeah. Will you be uh, awake most of the time? Because the last time I came up, you just uh, went off at some point and just napped, which I endorse. Well, no, I will probably uh, go off some, at some point. I do a daily nap. So what do you think? I, I do, too. Know, it's going to happen. So you, you can have your nap at the same time or, <laughs> you can. know, go down. <coughs> go down. We can nap. <laughs> we can nap time. together. It's on the schedule. Yeah. I could just and, uh, I could come into your room and just go, Dan, tell me a story. <laughs> 
<laughs> That'd be great. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so it's a very short. I, it's not a big deal what I'm about to tell you. It's just another weird <laughs> episode. It just come. It's funny. It comes on the heel of you just proclaiming. You know, I don't say much, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. You know, I'm, but I'm. I, uh, so you're out and about. I would no. Here's what happened. I went. To, I was going to a yoga class, and, I, and my class yeah. where I go is about you know seven blocks away. And uh, so I, I was going to do groceries after. So I drove my car, and uh, I I drove past the studio, and I saw that the all the parking lot was filled. And so I just turned a corner. It's on. It's like maybe a uh, hundred yards from the door. Not even that much, probably. And I saw a woman walking out of yoga. And getting into her car. I thought, perfect. Parking spot. So I, and there was a, a car behind her. So I was parked like you do. Or I, I was on the street waiting for her, her to get in the car and then start and drive away. I thought, perfect. So, you know, a few minutes go by and I'm thinking, oh, like I, I looked down at some point to check my phone and I looked up. I thought, oh, maybe she left. Maybe she went back into the studio or, you know, like maybe she's not. This is how long it was going on. So I pull forward to see if she's still in the car, and sure enough, she was, and she was on her phone. So I backed up again. And uh, that goes on for another couple of minutes. You know, it's, it's kind of rude-ish. Someone's sitting there, and they, the thing is, she knows I'm waiting for her to clear her spot. So finally, I go, well, I don't need to wait any longer. So I just go past, and I turn around, and I park right across the street and it's a, it's a side street. So it's very, very close. Like you're, you're parked just across from the person. So the, the, the next part, I definitely take responsibility for. The next part's on me. I get out of my car and I, and now I say to my, I think I'm, I think I'm speaking to myself, but I open the door and I say, I guess out loud, but not to her. I just said, huh? Namaste, selfish. <laughs> I said, Namaste, selfish to myself. And I'm, can you guys still hear me? Oh, yeah, we're okay. just listening intently. So uh, I just couldn't tell if you yeah. froze or not. So yeah. I say, uh, I just went like this. I, I just went like this, sort of, I think under my breath. Huh, Namaste, selfish. And I, and, I say that, and she looks at me. I was, she's only like from here to there across from me. She goes, go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. <laughs> like, she starts with, go fuck yourself. And I was like, what? She goes, you heard me. Go fuck yourself. And I'm not selfish. I was texting. And I was like, okay, easy there, yoga Karen. <laughs> <laughs> fucking you said that let's take it down a notch yoga karen i say you you, yes. you called her yoga karen. yoga karen oh okay yeah and uh now she's because <laughs> i was like w-. then i say maybe you should go back in the studio like you need more fucking yoga <laughs> <laughs> she goes you go fuck yourself and i was like okay all right you win i said all right you win <laughs> you're fucking you're way you're way angrier angrier than i am but uh, right. yeah, it was fucking. I said, "Oh yeah," I said, "Good yeah." Why don't you calm down? And then she fucking peels away. So that all happened within like okay. And I and I I admit that saying you know Namaste selfish might have been a bit I don't know something. But she was being selfish. So jokes on me though because later that afternoon I was out and I hadn't seen like I was parked driver's side towards her. And I'm not saying that she did this, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I've been pretty careful with this car. And I know every little scratch that's on it because I get it cleaned all the time and I'm cleaning it all the time. And there was a scratch down my drive, my passenger side door that wasn't there before. No. Oh. Quite a big scratch. Not a key oh. scratch, but something has scratched that car. Like it's a foot and a half long. And I was like, you know, that wasn't there before I her, encountered her. Her cat nails, yeah, her cat nails. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, but you know, I was saying to my friend, I was like, okay, all right, so I said namaste selfish, but there's a long way from that to go fuck yourself. Especially, Help me with that one. What's the namaste? Well, What's that? Is that Spanish or what? what, what? No, it's, that they, oh, that's why you didn't react. At the end of fucking yoga, they always say namaste. 
Oh, it's like I a yoga know. fucking thing. Oh, so okay. I say namaste again. You know, it's a they, oh, at the okay. end of every class they always fucking end it with namaste. Well, I don't even know what it means, but they say it. Oh, okay. So me yeah, saying namaste right. selfish to yoga people was like, ha, ah, oh. fuck yeah. But uh, you know, listen, I've I've been in a bunch of go fuck yourself, you know, encounters in my life, and usually there's a ramping up period to right. like, excuse me, what did you say? Blah 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 blah. Then go fuck yourself. But uh, yeah, she started it. Go fuck yourself. We can dissect this. First of all, how did she hear you if she was in the car texting? How did she hear that? Because the window was down. Okay, the window was down. So yeah, so there yeah. must have been. And how far away from not her like, were like, you? It's a, it was a side street, so you can imagine where I'm sitting in the office. Right. She might have been as far as the not even as far as the sidewalk, like r- close oh, to me. Okay. Like I got out of the car. It was a narrow street, so she's right across from me. It wasn't like mm-hmm. a boulevard. And I really, you know. Again, I take responsibility because I really wasn't saying it to her. I was just sort of saying it like, yeah, now I'm going to stay selfish. You know, this to me is like a 2024 problem because, you know, you're not supposed to drive and text or use your phone. So the responsible thing to do is before you pull away to get that out of the way so you're not doing it while you drive and i understand where you're coming from but at the same time in 2024 if somebody gets in their car and has to deal with something like she may have had to you do that before you pull away because it's dangerous and illegal to do it while you're driving just a thought yeah and and I, you know, I, as I was laying there before class, I thought, okay, well, maybe she had an emergency or maybe there was something. But the fact yeah. is, I live in the city. It's, a, it's kind of a city thing. You see, if somebody's waiting for your parking lot or parking spot, it's kind of right. courtesy to get the fuck out of there. Like, it is. <laughs> You know, it, it's just, and, and I gave her lots, and believe me, I'm not, I'm not giving it the amount of time I waited for her. And and I was in no hurry. I, I was there in plenty of time. Um, but, you know, it's also a city thing where, you know, she got so angry at me for that one phrase. I, I thought about it later. Like she must have had. Oh, yeah. Must have been something going on with her life. And, you know, who who knows what, you know, she's suffering with. But she's suffering with something. Maybe the well, earlier stages of you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Listen, I, I, but, I used to build up to go fuck yourself. <laughs> Like there's a rant. honest, honestly, like if you hadn't have called her selfish, maybe said something else. Like, could you have been about whatever you might have said? She could have said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I had an emergency," or you know, "I'm sorry, I," you know, like most people would do. Like, sort of apologize for taking that time because she had to deal with something at that moment. Yeah, on absolutely. Her phone. No, I totally understand. But, I mean, again, you flipped the switch by saying, if somebody out of the blue just called me selfish without really knowing the situation I'm in, I don't know. Would I say fuck you? I don't know. No, you wouldn't. Oh, you, would, look, you wouldn't start Look who with, you're talking to. Now. I'm no, I, even you. Even, okay. <laughs> even level-headed Fred. You're not going to start with go fuck yourself. You're probably right. No, no. That, that's, that <laughs> yeah. was, that's what made it so funny to me. Is like, well, that's why I, I said to her, like, I've been in many of these encounters. We're starting with go fuck. <laughs> I, it usually takes yeah. the how man to fucking couple of uh, back and forth before we get to that. So now that you know, mm. namaste is one of, is the thing that they say in yoga. You'll love this. I was at yoga on Mother's Day and uh, at the end of the class. The teacher says, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah um, to all the to all the women in the class who are uh, she says to all the women in the class. Happy Mother's Day. And to all the men in the class that support the women in their lives. Namaste. And I fucking said, Mama stay. And everybody fucking. <laughs> oh, of <laughs> course. Everyone laughed their fucking head off. And as I was leaving, everyone was like, oh, Mama stay. Mama, Mama stay. <laughs> Fuck. I killed it. Yoga. Mama stay. Nice. Well, I looked it up, by the way. It's a Sanskrit word that means bowing to you or I bow to you. Yeah, okay. Okay, there you go. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I'm just saying. It's one of the, it's, yeah. I've been doing this for 20 years. They say it at the end of every class. Mm-hmm. 
But Namaste Selfish made me laugh. <laughs> okay. uh, and now that, see, now that you know that, now I, I can see. Uh, so it was another so, just a fun little Howie encounter. Well, chances are you may see her again. Oh, that's obviously. right. I will. Would she ever be in your class? Any chance of that? Absolutely. There's, they only have like three classes a day at this place. So I'm going to a class tomorrow morning. There's a good there. That's the other thing that was so weird about it. I've got my uh, my sort of gym bag over my shoulder. She knows right. where I'm going. Right. And, and to get that angry at me after she had just come out of yoga, like, uh-huh. like you got all chilled out. Like, that's what also made me kind of laugh. It's like, really? This is you after yoga? Jesus. Anyway. Yeah. Like, she's part. Is there something in the yoga world, like, for tribe or cult or, you know what I mean? Like, uh, she's part of your group. Is there a word in the yoga world? For I, that? I don't know. What do you got in it? No, I'm just wondering because no, I, I know, you know, often with um, you know martial arts and stuff. Oh, I certain, see what you mean. Yeah, no, you I know don't. What I mean, there's certain yeah. terms for things. Well, there's a there there's a there's a chance at some point. <clears throat> I know her car though. Oh, I know her car. Anyway, that's my little scratchization. <laughs> scratchization. <laughs> yeah. so all, all, all I know is though that scratch wasn't on my car. The, you know, I've been again. I'm very, very careful with it. Other than the one time I backed into something, can um, it be buffed out? Do you think? Oh yeah, yeah. I got a couple. Do you think? Do you think out. that she actually parked her car somewhere else and then walked back in her anger and scratched it? Is that what you're thinking? Maybe. I don't know, Dan. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All I know is it wasn't right. there. Well, she sounds like a real biatch, so maybe she's capable of such things. You never know. Uh, so that's that. Um, do you want to transition now? Speaking of uh, biatch, do you want to hear uh, the clip where uh, Trump called uh, Kamala Harris a bitch? I, I haven't heard this one. My God. Oh. She's going to be mm-hmm. better. Um, so this is Trump uh, before the Biden announcement. We all, we're all done with the yoga thing. Mm-hmm. So this is before the Biden <laughs> announcement. <laughs> Moving on. And again, mm-hmm. I, I take some responsibility for that. Some of it was my fault, for sure. Sure, you're right. And, um, yeah, I mean, you opened the door, but uh, she dove in rather than... <laughs> That's right. That's what, mm-hmm. I kept walking around going, wow, man, I respect that. You started with Go Fuck Yourself. <laughs> um, all right, so this was a couple weeks ago, and uh, Trump's on the golf course. This is just after the debate. And uh, I'm going to play it as loudly as I can. Because it's it's audio while he's sitting on a golf cart at his stupid golf course. So uh, here we go. Yeah, it's a bad guy. He just quit. You know, he's quitting the rest. Is that right? Yep, I got him out of the right. Well, and that means we have Kamala. Uh, I think she's going to be better. She's so bad. She's so pathetic. It's so amazing. It's just, just so fucking bad. So he says she's so bad. She's so pathetic. She's a fucking bitch. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know what to say because you know how much fucking smarter she is than him? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I would like to get them on a stage and say, okay, uh, what continent is uh, this country in, uh, Donald? What co- uh, what country is this continent, continent in? He doesn't mm-hmm. even know the world. You know, did, you, did we talk about that? He didn't even know what NATO was when he became president. Didn't yeah, even know what no it was. Idea. He admitted that. This man is is so fucking disgusting and stupid and vile. The only intelligence he has is how to be evil. That's it. Yep. So after he got shot or whatever happened that day, um, you know, they, I, I watched. I don't know if you guys watched mm-hmm. it. His, uh, ex, I watched a couple minutes of his speech at the RNC, and it was just pathetic. But it was. He started off in sort of a more somber way, and the whole thing mm-hmm. was now he was going to unite the country. Mm-hmm. Well, and and you know, the whole Biden thing was brilliant because what it did, as I said earlier, it energ- it energizes the party, and it also it, it takes away a lot of his talking points. Hunter Biden, corrupt Joe Biden, all, mm-hmm. all in a, and I and I was kind of curious. I'm sure as you guys were, what were they going to start saying about Kamala Harris? Yeah, here's a tweet from this f- pathetic ghoul. He says, wow, just watching the fake news and they're doing their best to turn the worst president in the history of our country into a brilliant and heroic leader. Let me just pause for a second. Any other president in my lifetime, 
any other guy that had been president in our lifetimes, when somebody like Joe Biden drops out, mm-hmm. there would have been a statement, you know, listen, politics aside. Yes. The guy's been serving the country for 50 years and mm-hmm. he did the right thing. And even though we want to win, there would be there would be a moment of something of a of something presidential thanking him for his service. That's right. Joe, we've had our differences right. and our politics are different, but thank you for your service. Let's move on. But no, this is why it's, you know, people that like Trump, love Trump, follow Trump, are sycophants of Trump, are worse than Trump. This is what, like, it blows me away that people continue to hear this stuff and witness this stuff and still love this guy. They're so full of hate. Look at me. I'm full of hate. Like, I can't almost contain myself how much I hate this guy. And I hate, you know, the machine around him and the people that support him. I do. it. It's unhealthy. Like, I'm, I, I, again, I got to pull away from it because I I took some of it in yesterday. And I'm just, I just got so mad at humankind because it's like, who are these people? How do you, how do you, how do you support this guy? He's a vile, fucking ignorant gutter pig. And so, people still support but, but him. What I find, and yes to all of that. What I find again fascinating is: have these? Has everyone forgotten what I just said? That there was a time when there was some civility around all of this. Yes, and yeah. all the civility has He's been cool. taken out. And I just kept, and he, you know, I didn't watch any of the Fox stuff. I did watch the mm-hmm. a lot of the CNN stuff and listen to it. But, but there's none of that left there's no no there was no moment where donald trump then and, and i and i realized and i thought of why, why he wouldn't do that because if he gives any credence to the fact that joe biden was a was was a, a great public servant or whatever the civ, civil thing <clears throat> then then he's got to look at his base who have who are so far down the other way the hate they're they're so on the hate train that there's no more room for their great stupid leader to be civil so i read i read you the first half of that tweet so he goes on to say joe is heroic because he quit and to turn dumb as a rock Kamala Harris from a totally failed and insignificant vice president into a future great president. No, it just doesn't work that way. Well, Mm. meanwhile, prosecutor, senator, vice president, public servant. She's done more in her in her public service life Mm -hmm. than he's ever done. Right. And that's what I look forward to. He's a criminal. She's a prosecutor. So on a debate stage. And see, he's, you know, the coward is trying to back out of that one. Now he wants it, instead of being on ABC, he's demanding it be on Fox. So yeah. it would be fair. Because she can prosecute him on the stage. Yeah. You know, because she used to prosecute. Uh, pro- prosecute. Prosecute. Uh, <laughs> she used to prosecute. She used to prosecute um, sexual. Um, predators, yeah. Villain. Predators, yeah, yeah. villains. And. Um, <laughs> villains you know i mean she could stand there and say you know i used to prosecute people you know i uh, me personally i used to defend people i've never sexually abused myself i can only imagine what it's like yeah. um you know mr president um what are your thoughts on this or whatever she, however she yeah. wants to angle that question Freddie, there's no there's no way i guarantee you there's no way he debates her there's no absolute way he gets on a stage with her she's 59 years old she's sh- sh- sharp as a tack and he knows it and you know, his speech the other night, you know, apparently the first, what, 30 minutes was written and structured and and then he went off. And it was most of the stuff he said was just nonsense and lies. And, you know, and I've said it before, it's like politics is the mishmash in the middle. How does any decent person look at this guy yeah, and I think don't. you want him to be your leader? Like... Who again? Who, who are, are these people? people? Let me and, get- and, and 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 I and I look at it this way too. Here we are, sixty eight, and my every friend I have, every friend I have, thinks the way I do. Maybe not as extreme; they don't get as upset as I do. I don't know, but thinks the same way because you know, you sort of attract the same type of people as your friends, even family. Everybody has the same opinion of 
of Donald Trump, other than the one guy we know who owns the junkyard. And I remember Lou Skeezes was a big Trumper. I don't know whether he still is. But outside of that, I don't know anybody, anybody that I would sit with and and they would defend this guy or say, oh, you know, he's not, he's not bad. I, I <laughs> yeah. don't know anyone. No, I'm just laughing. You, know? I, you, you said all oh, your family's going to be at the trailer this week and it'll be kind of funny if all of a sudden John showed up with a, you know, Trump 2024 hat. <laughs> 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 Fucking your, your 12-year-old grandson's like, I don't know, Grandpa. But uh, do you know anyone? No. Uh, and and yeah. again, I, I, I don't want to cut you off because I know you're right. all... But let, let me, here's, here's the other, other right. tweet I wanted to read you guys. So, so w- within 24 hours, they're all, they all have the talking points. And, you know, some of their talking points are just so ridiculous. Megyn Kelly's saying that Kamala Harris slept her way, you know, to the top somehow. Like, it's just... Really? Fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, but here... And, and, of course, now that Trump is the oldest candidate in U.S. history to ever run for president... Mm-hmm. And because all that, all the wind out of the like, the, yeah. the, the, we talked about this last week. The thing that the the Republican Party didn't want to happen was this, because they had the whole playbook ready, and now this. So here's now another Trump thing. He's all caps, of course. Lion. He's calling now. He's got a nickname for her. He, he calls her Laughing Kamala because she laughs and lion kamala she goes on, on to talk about lion kamala the borders are she was in charge of the border blah 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 anyway he ends the tweet by saying has absolutely terrible poll numbers against a fine and brilliant young man named donald j trump like, i had to read i saw this one i had to read it twice i'm like who is he fucking talking about so young he's trying man. to position himself as a fine and brilliant young man named Donald J. Trump. So to your point, how could you read that and not think, okay, well, <laughs> this, guy, this guy is fucking unhinged. Like, how is it a race? Like, how does any normal, rational thinking, responsible person still gravitate to that, still cling to that, still plan on voting for that? Like, I don't... It's just, it's shocking. The state of that. What a statement on the country. And I know half the population doesn't. They're disgusted by him. Although, I, you know, I'm reading some stuff yesterday. There's a lot of people. A lot of people. I love when people, I sound like Trump now. A lot of people. Sir. But th- it came there's out a lot of said, people that, Sir. that hate his guts, that we're going to vote for him because they don't like Biden and they thought he was too old or whatever. And now would they change their position? But again, not his not his vile, disgusting, Bible thumping, creepy base. You know who is? Don't worry be- about it. What's what is she going to grab these people? Well, she's the going to grab know? this. Like there, there was a, a Nikki Haley. Um, I don't. I don't. They call they call them packs. I'm not even sure what that stands for. It's like their fundraising mm-hmm. political fundraising arm. So Nikki Haley, a bunch of women. This is the thing that Trump. This is their biggest nightmare. <clears throat> They're running against a younger, smarter, black woman, woman of color. And they don't know how to combat that because there is going to be a lot of... So the Nikki Haley thing is they had a a, a fundraising arm, Dan, of Nikki Haley that came out almost immediately and said, "We're, we're, we're going to put all our money behind Kamala Harris, who in the first 24 hours since it was announced has raised the most amount of money <clears throat> that anybody has ever raised in a sh- in that in, she's raised eighty million dollars have been donated to her campaign. Well, I mixed up Nikki Haley. Yes. Isn't she a yes Republican? No, I'm not saying Nikki Haley the person the 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 the, the fund that was going to give their money the Nikki oh. Haley these oh. women that were supporting Nikki Haley and hate Trump right and hate Trump have now right. announced like yes there's been hundreds right. of announcements of people that are endorsing her. But this mm-hmm. Nikki, this is what I'm saying, that there was a bunch of people, to your point, that didn't want to vote for Biden. So they were sort of going to hold their nose. Yes. I mean, in this case, put on fucking hazmat suits and vote for Trump. Mm-hmm. But now they've got a candidate. And this woman, I think it's brilliant in a lot of ways. I mean, I would have preferred a, a year ago that, what's his face, Newman, a Newsom ram. But it's mm-hmm. brilliant because there's Roe, v, Roe versus Wade, the prosecutor versus the perpetrator, whatever they're saying. And the fact that there's a lot of women, they were the suburban housewives, mm-hmm. the Republicans were trying to attract. Well, they're not going to vote for this guy anymore. Yeah. 
No. Great. And, you know, like they did for Obama, and again, you hate to play these color games, but sometimes you have to. It's going to be, you know, on black America to show up because they did for Obama, then they didn't for for uh, Hillary. For, um, Hillary. And I'm sorry, but here's your chance. I mean, well, we've often said on this show, and, you know, I'm of the mind, the world needs more female leaders. Oh, yeah. And how glorious it would be if this woman, this black woman who cares, beat Trump and became the president. I would love to see a woman lead America. Yeah, I would. I would, too. And this, by the way, is the Hillary do-over. That's what I'm calling it. It's the Hillary do-over. It's their chance now. And a lot of women, a lot of women that, I don't know, maybe didn't like the Clinton stink or whatever, mm-hmm. are going to, this is their chance. Or thought she'd win anyway. Or thought, she, yeah, maybe didn't show mm-hmm. up. But, um, Here's a, I, I wrote this on Twitter and I got, I got quite a bit of response, but it's just a little fun fact. I think I told Dan too, but Fred, I don't know if you know this, but there was a, a one year that Kamala Harris, uh, I don't know, I guess her father was a diplomat of some kind. She moved to Montreal and she ended up being friends with my ex-wife. Right. Yes. yes. <laughs> Randy. Little Randy Rosenthal and Kamala Harris were school chums. And like, I, I used to right. say to Randy, look, well, how well do you know her? I, like, they had sleepovers. They were like friends. Mm-hmm. So I wrote this on Twitter. I said, uh, Kamala Harris came to Montreal, was friends with my ex-wife, which means if, if Kamala Harris becomes president, I'm probably going to be the ambassador to Saskatchewan. <laughs> that's, right, yeah. what, that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm angling for Dan and uh, mm. I want you to know that you'll be in if you want to be in my cabinet I will as put, you should I'm going to put you in charge of Lloyd Minster <laughs> but yes I, yeah. I'm going to start right. signing everything the ambassador to town, Saskatchewan right? so because <laughs> it's a border town yeah exactly the amazing part of that is so if Randy walked by Kamala Harris she'd probably say Randy Absolutely. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, Dan, you're, At the very you're, least, if she becomes president, maybe, you know, Randy can go down and get a tour of the White House. Wouldn't that be something? Absolutely. Dan, you're frozen now. I don't know. You're, uh, mm-hmm. you're compromised. You've been compromised during this conversation. Yeah, like Randy knows her well enough. And like I said, they spent a year of being sort of school buddies, and uh, she was one mm-hmm. of her friends in uh, Montreal. and. Yeah, maybe we should get Ra- um, we should get Randy on for a report on Kamala Harris. We should. Yeah, that would be, be funny. Oh, it would be funny. But and and again, I don't know how much time we're going to spend on this because you know we always have to worry about how much people want to hear about this. But again, it's the biggest thing in the news. Um, this little mini me, this sawed off little fuck named JD Vance. Yeah, too. you want to talk about the most vile ticket? in the history of the world and again he's still polling like 50 percent or 48 like what is wrong with that country and especially if why don't can nobody can no these people that talk about the economy two things here it's proven it's not hearsay it's not bullshit it's not a lie like Trump always delivers. The economy under Biden has been remarkable. How he's brought that country back from COVID is amazing. The numbers are there. They lead the free world. Should be celebrated. By far. It should be celebrated. Like, he, like, it's something else. But again, you know, the... You know, the evil side, they're still talking about the worst economy ever and the country's no, never been in worship. It's just wrong. And I heard someone talk, and I forget who it was, I was talking about Biden in that debate. With Trump, all the missed opportunities Biden had to jump all over him, like when Trump was saying something about, you know, how horrible the economy was. Uh, you know, Biden, if he was sharp, could have come back with oh, that $80 million dollars. You owe E.G. Uh, uh, Carroll for 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 raping her. If you still had that money and you'd put it in the right investment, you'd be up by forty percent right now. Yeah, no, <laughs> Donald. No. But but the, the, under my presidency. Yeah, the thing is, facts have no. Uh, there's no. Yeah. They don't. It doesn't matter to anybody. It's just. It's just as we've said for four years now. It's just a. Just got to cheer for your your team. That's all that matters to these people. Uh, we'll pick this up again. This won't be the last conversation, we promise. Uh, Dan Duran's news is coming up. Uh, we've got a uh, guest, as I mentioned, John Salenza. 
is uh, standing by. So, Dan, uh, I don't know what's going on with you, but you're frozen again. All right. So, in the meantime, while uh, we get John settled here, uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, one of our other great supporters, Fred? Yes, uh, Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan, Canada's number one group benefits plan for small business. Uh, Go to chamberplan.ca today. You can get a free quote how your small business can become part of this. Uh, You'll be pleasantly surprised whether, you know, your company has one person, a hundred people. There's a plan for you and, you know, your employees will appreciate it, obviously. Prescriptions, dental, all those basic things, some uh, therapies. They have an HR component. They have the Teladoc system. It really is fascinating uh, to think that so much can be offered to small companies at an affordable price. They've done a great job on holding the line on uh, the premiums over the past few years, a uh, few years, because, uh, you know, it's a nonprofit. And, uh, they got to uh, hold the line on premiums because small business needs to know where we're, where we're going with expenses like this. So, you know what I'm talking about. It's the Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan, chamberplan.ca. As I mentioned off the, uh, the top of the show, uh, our guest today is uh, familiar to you. Maybe not his name, but the product he developed uh, years ago. You've probably been to some sporting event like I had. I a couple years ago at a bunch of golf tournaments, I started noticing that they were giving out BioSteel on the first tee to make sure that you were hydrated. Uh, well, the guy that developed that has developed something else. He is uh, with us. He's the founder and CEO of Sizzle Brands, who are bringing you Quench with a C, C-W-E-N-C-H, hydration. John Salenza, is that how I'm, I'm, I'm pronouncing it even remotely correct, John? You've got it. Bang on. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for uh, waiting for uh, 15 minutes. I appreciate it. A lot of people uh, come late, but you came early, and we do appreciate it. John, you know, what was it about? uh, Because there was a, for a long time, all there was in the sort of sports drink space was just fruity, sugary drinks that people were, I'm talking about all the the famous ones. What, 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 what What led you to develop a different, an alternative to it? Yeah, so on our first venture, it wasn't just me. I uh, was partnered with my childhood best friend, Mike Camilleri, who was a professional hockey player. Um, I was of a sports marketing background. He was a pro athlete that took his training very seriously, and he was looking always looking for alternatives in the space. Um, so we decided to start a sports nutrition company, two buddies, uh, go at it with a small budget. And we were looking for the best-in-class products, speaking to different manufacturers, what have you. Um, about a year and a half into the business, we met Matt Nickel, who is the former strength coach of the Leafs. He had a product that he was working on, uh, you know, something that we, we felt um, – was on brand for what we wanted to do. So we brought Matt in as a partner. Um, many, many, many renditions of, of, of the formula, to say the least. And uh, we brought it to market, and it was uh, a wild ride. We incorporated the company in 2009. Uh, I believe we brought Matt in around 2000. 11 right around there and we sold it in 2019 wow um so now now uh back at it with with quench and a lot of our original team members that um helped make biosteel the success it was so um what makes quench unique in this uh field for sure so science has come a long way since since we um we did biosteel so just to give you a quick snapshot six electrolytes uh three to one sodium to potassium ratio no sugar no artificial flavors no preservatives also the quality of the ingredients so for instance our sodium is celtic sea salt right so that's not the the salt well some people might but that's not the salt that most people are sprinkling on their fries or their steaks or no they're not <laughs> right, it's true. Or, or, or what have you and then you know we're, we're big believers in the uh in the tetra packaging right we believe it's right. eco-friendly and um, I mean, I don't know if you if or anybody listening or either of you have ever walked into a you know, PET facility where there, you know, there's blow mold plastic bottles being filled, uh, making other drinks. But just the smell of that alone is not something that, you know, I, I would want to put in put into my body. So, yeah, we're, we're premium in the space. We're a touch more expensive, but, you know, we're, we're we're best in class. Well, let me ask you a little bit about hydration, because, you know, I, I play a little golf. I'm outside. It's hot. And, and you know. You know, it, it, there it is because it's great. You got to drink a lot of water, but what is it about Quench and, and products like that that are so much better for you? And what what do they replace, and how quickly does that happen? 
Yeah, so so it's electrolytes at the end of the at the end of the day, right? So there's no different than you know when you go to the doctor with a common cold and, and and you leave and they tell you you know what hydrate drink go home and drink a, a bunch of water, right? Well, water is great. I mean, we all we all need water to say the least, but it's it's electrolytes that you're looking to replace, right? That that you're losing in your sweat, whether when you're sick or you're out on the golf course on a hot day, and it's the quality of those electrolytes and how you can get them into your body mm-hmm. without things, without artificial flavors, without uh, preservatives, or without or without different ingredients that cause you to you know run to the bathroom, so you're not actually getting your nutrients into your body, right? So really, it's about so electrolyte replacement at the end of the day, and 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 keeping you hydrated, and when you're hydrated. Um, you know, a lot of people fall in love with energy drinks, right? Because you get this big buzz about you, but then your chest is gone. But if you can just stay hydrated, um, you'll find that you're, you're, you know, you're more aware during the day, you're quicker on your feet, and you're just generally feeling good throughout the day instead of some big, big up and some mm-hmm. big down. Um, the evolution of sports drinks, like, you know, we've learned over the years that sugar basically is poison. <laughs> um a lot of these drinks were heavy in sugar to begin with, and I know they've evolved, you know, to be sugar-free and what have you. But, uh, I mean, that's the first thing I would reach for. Now, anything that has zero sugar is huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, science has obviously changed, um, you know, since the the Florida swamp with the with, with mm-hmm. the Gators for sure. Yeah, and it's not it's not just about the sugar. It's it's the artificial flavors, the preservatives, yes. the dyes that are in these products that you know have their have their long term detriments for sure. But the game's changed. Um, there's still there's still a place for for carbohydrates, right? you know, wh- whether the source it is, and when it comes to mm-hmm. athletic performance or your everyday life, for sure, it's just how you're going to consume those, right? Now, you know, is it in your fruits and vegetables, or do you want just a bunch of sugar in your sports drink, right? So, right. Um, it's definitely all all about balance, um, and we also have glycogen storage, right? So, if you've had some, you know watermelon this morning with your breakfast or whatever the case may be, right? You're going to be able to use that throughout the course of, course of your day. You know, it's mm-hmm. funny. I've just watched, even yesterday I was playing in a tournament in Hamilton and it was a long day. We we're playing 27 holes. And I just noticed even the evolution of how guys our age, you know, a little bit older than you, John, just a bit, you know, uh, how we've evolved from, you know, guys having a beer and a hot dog to, you know, the guys I play with are all, they all have almonds. We're all drinking water all day long. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just so different. And we're, you know, I tell you, I, I can't tell you how many golf tournaments I've been at where they hand out bio steel and now hopefully starting to hand out quench because people's ideas of what you need to maintain your meat sack, especially when you're doing something has changed so much. Yeah, no, no, for sure. It's definitely, I think we've hit that, that point in life in, in this age group where, you know, you start to look at your longevity and oh, yeah. and you, you don't necessarily feel the same, same as you used to when you're younger, when you roll out of bed. I take it back to when, you know, back in school, right? Like we'd go to school with a juice box. Yeah. Right? That was mm-hmm. full of sugar. Yes. Maybe maybe get like one or two sips from the water fountain during a day, basically because, you know, you were bored in class and just wanted to walk <laughs> around right. and see if you could see any of your friends. Mm-hmm. And you're there from 8.30 to 3.30, then potentially playing sports after school. And I know for me, I was, you know... Um, John, no one, John I, no one gave us water. We had no water. We, we, nothing, we're nothing. From the, we're, we're from the 60s. No one drank any water. But, but, you know, <laughs> the way things have evolved, my two grandkids, they're 10 and 8. They've always got a bottle of water with them. Yeah. Yeah, they go Nowadays. to school. They go to school with the refillable, right? Absolutely. That's, you know, and whether. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, my grandson goes down to the park to play baseball with his buddies. He's got his refillable yeah. water bottle. It's, and they're always sipping from it. Yeah. It, and again, it, going back to when we were kids, especially me in the 60s. Oh, it was yeah. Like, geez, the our, our parents didn't give us water. They said, here, have a cigarette. You'll enjoy <laughs> Have a smoke. So uh, yeah. John, John Salenz is with us. He's the founder and CEO of Sizzle Brands, and they make Quench. It's uh, Quench with a C, W-E-N-C-H. Hmm. I have a question. You grew up here in uh, Toronto? Yes. And uh, Camaletti was your uh, ch- high school or childhood buddy? Yes. So what was it like for you in uh, 2009 when he went to play for Montreal? It was crazy. Did, no, but I'm saying, did you talk to him? Go, were, were you not a Leaf fan growing up? Uh, you know, I, I ended up being a fan of whatever team he was playing for. Yeah, we were that you close. Um, you know, to uh, watch him excel in a Canadian city, especially the playoff run that they went on was, uh, was, a, was a lot of fun for sure, especially because going into the year, um, you know, they were – 
preseason rankings were close to dead last in the league, right? So mm-hmm. um, that was a lot of fun to witness. That was uh, one of his best sure. years, 2000, uh, 2008 in Calgary and 2009 in mm-hmm. Montreal. He had scored 39 and 26 goals in, that, in those seasons. He did. That's right. Did he ever want to play here? Or was he too smart for that? <laughs> uh, that's his story to tell, not mine. All right, all right, all right. Well, listen, man, where is Quench available right now, and where do we get yeah. it? Yeah, it's uh, distribution's growing by the day. Uh, Sport Check, we've got national listing at Sport Check, uh, locally to where we are, Summerhill Market, uh, all the source for sports hockey shops starting to pop up in all the hockey arenas, and you'll be seeing some of your more big box retailers over the next uh, three to four months for sure. And uh, that's would, excellent. Yeah, where would you like people to go to find it? I, I know there's a, a, a website, Sizzle Brands with a C. Wow, that would, would be the mother company, but Hench, uh, Sizzle Brands would be the mother company, right. but quenchhydration.com. Uh, C W E N C H hydration.com. Quenchhydration.com. What are you people waiting for? Go get some quench. What are the, what are the flavors you offer? Yeah, so we've got a blue raspberry. Um, we've got what we're calling a berry crush, which is kind of your whole mixed berry t- type gamut. We've got a cherry lime and um, what we call uh, the rainbow swirl. Oh, nice. Which is, which is like a fruit punch. Wow. And it's a competitive market. So uh, to get in all those uh, outlets is uh, pretty good at this point. Very competitive. Yeah, yeah we've got a great we've got a great team here. You know, uh, some people have been at, on our team have been at it for 10, 15 years now. So it's interesting when you start a business, you know, we started when we started Bios, I was 27 years old. I knew no, no one. Right. You, you literally mm-hmm. jogging to meetings because you got no money in the bank account and then, you know, begging when you get in there. Now it's it's a little bit different in the sense that our peer group is now the buyers in mm-hmm. different stores or running other right. brands or what have you. So it's uh, it's a lot different the second time around for sure. I'm sure it's a lot you. different because you have I, I, you you have some brand equity in the marketplace, but it isn't easy, is it? It's not none of the. It's competitive. Yeah. It's competitive. Every, every day you wake up and you play against Coke and Pepsi, mm-hmm. right? So you know, Body Armor is and Powerade are sports drinks by Coke, and then uh, you know, Pepsi has Gatorade. So it's um, it's a I think it's as competitive as it gets um, from a business standpoint. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the Coke and Pepsi, we're, we're not doing interviews with them. You know what? We refuse. <laughs> we say no to Coke and Pepsi. No. We say yes to Quench. Quenchhydration.com. All right, John, thanks for I hope this won't be the last time we chat, my friend. That was great. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Appreciate okay, you, my pal. friend. Thanks, there John. Is. See, there's somebody that knows what they're doing. You know, meetings and businesses. Not us. We're just hanging out, yelling about Trump all day. Uh, I'll tell you what we do have. We have our own beverage. It's Humble and Fred's interesting all-Canadian ale available at Stonehooker Brewery. That's right. If you want to go and find out more about the Stonehooker story, go to stonehooker.com. And, of course, our big... uh, Humble and Fred's uh, interesting ale, Stonehooker beer tasting, and pizza party on the patio coming up August 7th. You'll have a chance to actually sample the refreshing Humble and Fred beer. At the brewery, there's always well stocked fridge for take home, plus 18 draft beers on tap for a variety of styles to try out. Oh, it's also a, did you know that Stonehooker is a dog friendly environment? Maybe I'll bring the Stan Man. Yeah. That would be nice. August 7th. Poor Stan. Getting old. Miss that boy. He's a good boy. I'm not bringing him to the trailer, though. You're not? Well, because I'm going to be in the East End, and I don't want to come all the way back to Toronto to get him. Anyway, go check out Stonehooker and get, of course, the Humble and Fred. uh, All interesting, all Canadian. Locally, uh, you buy uh, over $50. You get uh, free delivery locally in the GTA. Uh, you can get free delivery uh, with a purchase of over $100. Stonehooker.com. Freddie? Uh, whether you're a sports better, a horse racing fan, a poker, a casino player, Bodog is your number one source of online gambling entertainment. From their industry-leading odds, world-class sports book, to their uh, fully loaded casino and race book, they've been providing Canadian players with an unparalleled gaming experience since 1994. We'll look ahead at the Olympics over the uh, next few weeks as far as odds and who's uh, favored to win what and how. Uh, yes, the Olympics are coming up. CBC is going to be having uh, 22, I read this, 22 hours um, mm-hmm. of coverage. 
I noticed that uh, young fellow. What's his name? Uh, Xander Scheffler? Xander Shoffley. Shoffley. The other yeah. guy's Scheffler, right? Scotty Shoffley. Scheffler, Xander Shoffley, yes. Yeah, interesting that the it's two similar names. I know, it's weird. And they're both great golfers and near the top of the leaderboards quite often. Um, he hold, he's the uh, gold. Uh, he's the he holds the gold medal in yeah. men's golf, eh? From from two thousand twenty, which was where? Where was two, it? And he's won two majors this year. Where was the? Uh, I'm so dumb. Where was the Olympics in two thousand twenty? Was it? I don't know. <laughs> really? I mean, it's well. Let me do some research. Oh, I just did. Uh, Summer Olympics uh, were in uh, Tokyo. Oh, okay. Tokyo. So uh, I've never watched. They they brought golf back to the Olympics in 2016 for the first time in like 100 years. Yeah. And and at the time I said, well, considering all the other dumb sports they have as Olympic sports, golf would have made sense. It was an Olympic sport, sport at one time. But I have never watched any of that coverage, basically because of uh, time differences, and I just didn't really care. Yeah, the um, I was actually doing some research because you know? when I heard when I heard that Xander uh, held the Olympic or was the current Olympic champion, you know, before they brought it back, I think the previous winner was a Canadian, like in nineteen twenty something. Yeah, was actually a Canadian guy. You know what Xander's short for? Xanadu? Alex Xander. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know Why? that for the longest time. He uh, has done something only about eight or nine men have done in golf history, and that's win two majors in the same season. It's very rare to do it. And uh, yes. for a long time, because he's been around for... He's got to be in his late 20s, I'd say 27, 28, and has been a top player in the world for many years, for the five, five mm-hmm. or six years. And at the beginning of this year, there was a, you know, one of these sports uh, podcasts I listened to, and they were talking about you know, the best player not to have won a major. And he's at the top of everyone's list, and he wins the PGA in May, and he wins mm-hmm. the Open Championship, formerly the British uh, Open, this week. And uh, it's just interesting how quickly he goes from that guy who's never won to now he's got mm-hmm. a Hall of Fame career because basically to get into the yeah. Golf Hall of Fame, two majors will do it. That's almost mm-hmm. automatic entry. I was reading a story about Tiger Woods that he didn't make the cut again, but he had a terrible week because he couldn't sleep a couple of nights for a couple of nights after his buddy Donnie was shot. Did you read that story? No, I so didn't upset. read that. Oh, yeah, he was very upset that... Uh, Trump had been, you know, an attempted assassination. And I'm thinking, does he mean generally that a president of the United States, it bothers him that, you know, it just the very idea of it, regardless of who the president is, but apparently it. Are you sure that was Tiger and not Bry- Bryson DeChambeau? No, I was. I, the one I read was Tiger. He couldn't sleep. And that was part of, you know, he was he wasn't in the best condition for that. Tiger Woods says he lost sleep over Trump assassination attempt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great. Anyway. I don't know, guys. I don't know. If I have a friend and he's, uh, you know, convicted, adjudicated, whatever the word is. Of rape. For, se- for sexual abuse. He really ain't my friend anymore. I don't know. Just call, call me crazy. <laughs> well, call me crazy. You know, I, I, I know... Um, you know, we've been talking about this now as a team, <laughs> Team Trump hate, for several years now. <laughs> it, what I mean, I think it doesn't. You, you can continue to say it, but it goes without saying that we all hate him. What <laughs> I think is, uh, I mean, really, at, at some point, you're just we're saying the same thing over and over again. Yeah, we hate him. Yes, He's right. terrible. Yes, yeah, horrible. But what I've always found more fascinating than the fact that we hate him is the people that don't hate him. Like, like for instance, the you know this this story you just said. Like, how how if and Tiger was upset because Trump got shot, as opposed to you know the president was attempted assassination. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you how do you hear all the things about the man and continue not to hate him? Is the fascinating part? It is. I guess you buy in that everything, all you know four indictments all 34 convictions all hundred and some odd charges they're all bullshit everything is bullshit 
You know, and I did this the other day. You know, it's documented. He was fined $2 million from stealing from his own charity yeah. that was supposed to go to kids. He was convicted of, you know, the university scam, which robbed tons of young students of money. Yeah. Guilty. It's not hearsay. It's not a rumor. It happened. The rape. It happened. The fraud. It happened. It's not. And, you know, they'll throw stuff at you about Biden. Well, he once had a shower with his 12-year-old daughter. <laughs> you know, daughter. That, that's their comeback. Yeah, and it's absolutely. Like, oh, oh, okay. All but, right. But if you brought any of that stuff up mm-hmm. to Megyn Kelly or Sean Hannity or mm-hmm. any of the Republicans. And by the way, I forgot to tell you that I started calling uh, J.D. Vance. Hillbilly, mm-hmm. hillbilly Dan Quayle. <laughs> he's, he's, he's so he's so fucking dumb. Know. Hillbilly Dan Quayle. Like he's so bad at this. I, I watched a couple of clips of him yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's a good. It, I'll tell you what. He should be because he's out there going. I'm I'm disappointed. I wanted to debate Kamala. Oh no, you didn't. Yeah. No, you didn't, yeah. my friend. <laughs> Hillbilly Dan Quayle, you dumbass. But um, I can't remember what I was going after. Oh yeah, the convictions. See. <clears throat> If you said that to any of those Fox hosts and said, here's the proof he had a university, he built thousands of students mm-hmm. out of their money. It's all, it's all, they don't have an answer for it. So, well, they, yeah. yeah. So what they do is they go, yeah, well, Biden had a shower with his 12 year old daughter. And if that's bad, well, if you think it's bad that Biden had a shower with his 12 year old daughter, then you definitely should think <laughs> all that Trump stuff is bad. That's Rather right. than, okay, Trump did that, but Biden, it's okay because Biden had a... T- <laughs> right. Well, that's not the point. The point is both would be bad. Here's a clip of Trump talking about <laughs> how he wants to fuck his daughter. Do you want to hear that clip? Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, one of the things we have to be careful of, though... Is what? Well, that we... That we we don't get so far into the hey Trump, hey Trump, that we forget no, that don't. there's so many funny things about the whole thing. Oh, I know. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, yeah, and, and you know, I've always been fascinated with American politics, how nasty it can get, but it's usually on issues, and it's not so much personality based, you know, as accusing, you know, of of um. You know, issues and policies and questioning things. And it's down and dirty. It has been for years. But it's a whole new world now. Well, it's not new anymore. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, since Trump, it's just, uh, you know, and as you said off the top of the show, the perfect opportunity for Trump to look like a nice guy and say, hey, Joe, you know, my hat's off to you. You were in 50 years. We had our differences. You know, have a good life. But yeah, can't do that because he's such an evil prick. But that's what a normal. Mm-hmm. Well, he's not. And the thing is, it's it's. There's so many adjectives. Yes, mm-hmm. you know he's an evil prick. I I put on Twitter uh, to that clip I played of um, the clip I played of Trump talking about uh, you know Kamala Harris and calling her a called her a fucking bitch or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I. I quoted that clip and I said something about you're a fucking bitch you fat pathetic ghoul <laughs> and so you know I'm right believe me I'm right there uh-huh. with you mm. yeah but uh, what was I going to play for you here hang on anyway I've lost my there's, there's so much hate I've lost my train of thought now <laughs> so much uh, yeah and I don't know because it's going to get worse and Ka- uh, Kamala Harris, you know, if this was a normal race and you might look at her and oh, go, anyway. well, yeah, there's some deficiencies there. There may be. But as far as just a uh, 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 just a decent human being who wants good for all. Right. You know what I mean? That's what she is compared to Trump. So it's like, how do you not sort of embrace her as, you know, just a, a symbol of decency in this sea of puke yeah i know what i was going to say um yeah that that's it, it, the reason that trump didn't do what a normal politician would do is mm-hmm. because he didn't he didn't grow up in that culture say what you want about whether it's canadian politics or u.s politics or even politics around the world there's sort of an unwritten i don't know rule or there's a sort of an etiquette when you've when you've got an opponent, that's why Trump couldn't concede the election, because he's mm-hmm. he's he's never been 
anything but who he is now at age mm-hmm. 78. He's never been civil because to be civil would, to, would be to admit that you're not the best, that you're not the mm-hmm. smartest. You know, when he calls himself in that tweet I read, a young, a fine young man, that's mm-hmm. who, he actually thinks of himself like that. So to expect anything different is to be frustrated, which is what we are at times, because there is no, all of, all of what we've said today is, is both true and rhetorical. Yeah, it's it's just how it got there and that he's a survivor. You think he would have been long buried, but here we go Say, again, saying the same thing. It's uh, it's just frightening. It is. It's frightening. Well, I've got because uh, I've got, hope. you know, I, I mean, do they stand a better chance that Democrats Way better. are winning? I, I, I guess. But Way are, better. Are, well, I hope you're right. Um, no, because I'll tell you what it's given me. I've watched. Uh, I watched a lot of the coverage. As soon as it happened, I was like, if, when I saw, I was watching the uh, golf mm-hmm. Sunday afternoon. I'm watching the golf, and I was looking at my phone, and I see the Biden letter. I had to look at it a couple times because I thought, oh, this is a parody. I did. Mm-hmm. I had to go. I chat. I was like, why? Because mm-hmm. it had. I literally it hadn't showed up in the world yet, other than on Twitter. But mm-hmm. from that moment on, I've had a. Uh, I feel energized in terms of there is somebody that can beat this guy, and it because I'll tell you what, it wasn't going to be Joe Biden. No, no, that, uh, yeah, that was a train out of control. There was no pulling that back, even if it deserved to be. There it, it, There was just no returning from that. You know, and I said, look at Kamala. Uh, she sets a record for like a one-day fundraising, $81 million. No president candidate yeah. has ever raised that much in one day. No, I mentioned that. That's where, when, when I was talking about the Nikki Haley uh, money. Yeah. That's, that's it. This is yeah. the, this is the thing that Trump people didn't want to happen because she is going to look so much better mm-hmm. smarter younger in comparison because their whole thing was joe's too old mm-hmm. and now they're all scrambling around to uh even this mike johnson guy i fucking hate all these people <laughs> just do no um, i know <laughs> hey, there's, so there's much, another point so too much Howard. hate you talk about the sick offense like how honestly you talk about your team. How can you be part of a team where all these men, mostly men, are spineless jellyfish sycophants? You notice not only has Trump sort of tipped his cap to Biden on the way out saying, you know, thanks for your years of service. Nobody under Trump has done it either. Yeah. No congressman, no set, none of them, because they're all deathly afraid of Donald Trump. What does that say about a man? That's a great point. That's a great point. No, so nobody in that political arena has the decency to say, all fighting mm-hmm. politics aside, this man did what he, he did something for his country that's selfless, which is what oh, it's such a contrast. Like mm-hmm. he he did it for all the right reasons. He recognized he just didn't mm-hmm. have. You know, I don't know who said this, but uh, it just didn't have the fastball anymore. You know, no. Yeah. And it happens to everybody. At some point, you mm-hmm. just lose your edge. And he did us. He, he was a selfless act. And, and that's why he will go down as a great president. While this other fucking thing, <laughs> this thing <laughs> just. Yeah. Anyway, we got to go here. We got uh, Nick time. Uh, I'm play a little of uh, this music. Do you recognize Uh-oh. this? It's some sitcom. It's the uh, Bob Newhart theme. All right, Bobby. Yeah, sad. After uh, Nick, let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, passing of the great Bob Newhart, who uh, died while we were gone. And that's love. But again, we should a little more hatred in the show too. You got to play that clip of Joe Rogan. Probably we'll get to one of the dumbest sack of hammers you would ever want to. Oh no, we're gonna get to Um, that. We'll get to it all. Great. Well, uh, you know, we're trying to like you know break up the hatred. Wow, <laughs> yeah. look at that, kids. That's a very oh, cool cab that. building oh. Toronto's skyline. Are you going to buy one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we have to wear the same uniform when I'm on. Um, <laughs> okay. You tell you what, dude, you send us some hats and we'll put them on. No, uh, but we Nick got said, th- do you want to buy one? Oh, no, I said, yeah, we'll buy one. <laughs> okay.
There's Absolutely, we'll buy one. bucks each. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nick. Hey, Nick, don't push it, my friend. Uh, <laughs> <I'll try not. laughs> so, uh, were, 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 you, were you just talking about Joe Biden or what? Yes, yeah, so we we're talking about how uh, when Joe Biden stepped down, any other political opponent would have the decency to say, okay, politics aside, you know, good on you, Joe, way to serve your country, you know, all that kind of normal shit that people say. Mm-hmm. Not, not, not Trump. <laughs> Trump's saying that, you know, like, it's just, it's insanity, my friend. Well, everything's insane down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think we should get into politics, though, because then uh, you guys might not, might not like me anymore, so... Well, we couldn't help but like you, Nick. You're a fine fellow Mm -hmm. and founder and CEO of Fusion Corp Developments and author of Building Toronto Skyline. You got it. So I guess we're uh, we're at another episode, right, of The Condo Report. This, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Condo Report. The Condo, hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. What up, uh, Nick? What's the latest? What's uh, the greatest? What's the greatest, Nick? Well, I, I think every uh, we every episode I'm coming up with you with uh, some bad news, but also some good news. So we're mm-hmm. here to talk about the condo report. But I think today we're going to talk about the market. Uh, and the cost of not doing business in our condo industry. It's a huge impact to the economy, to the local economy. So I think let's start off with uh, interest rates because I think tomorrow is going to be the announcement from the um, Bank Bank of Canada, Canada. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just a day away, and there's speculation that we're headed for another interest rate cut. And I think we're going to see it happen because we had – uh, good numbers for inflation. Yeah, they did. They were great, actually. Yes, and I think even down south, uh, same same situation. So, I think we're gonna we're we're headed for another rate cut for sure. And uh, you know, even all the news outlets are reporting that it's really necessary for us to have this rate cut for many average Canadians renegotiating their mortgage. Um, but uh, definitely. We haven't really moved the needle for the condo market yet, so another rate cut might see some some sort of more productivity there on that front. Well, and when you look at it, I mean, it might just be a quarter point, but with the last one, all of a sudden it's a half point down in yes. the past few months. And so, I think uh, yeah. I think we're going to move the needle a bit more too because this sure. market, I think, uh, it's needed for sure. And uh, sales are condo sales, unfortunately, are at an all time low. And we, like I said before, the the market has not really responded for the initial rate cut. But if we have more rate cuts consistently happening, then I believe it's going to probably uh, improve our improve our chances on on getting condos condo sales moving again. So when you say that, you mean under construction condos, or do you mean condos blanket, even resales? Well, I, I think they definitely affect both. Okay. Yeah, new sales and also, but you know, the resale market for sure. There's no question okay. about it. All right. Um, do you see um, now your your project the uh, the one that everyone's talking about is uh, 60 on Broadway in Orangeville? Yeah, everyone, uh, I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, I was going to say I can't go anywhere. People stop and they go, "Hey, how man? Uh, what's going on in Orangeville with the 60 on Broadway?" I go, "Well, uh, when Nick's on next time, he's going to talk about it. It's number 60 on Broadway altogether." Dot com and if you go there what do people find yeah so i think uh, what's going to happen for 60 on broadway i also said that maybe sometimes uh, location makes it makes a big uh has an impact and we're going to find out and i'm going to get you that that information when when the time is available but wow. we're still waiting to launch unfortunately there are delays with uh with approval sometimes and uh this is one of the times that we're having a bit of delay but a guy like you you you've been at this a long time you know that uh, it's a it's a patience game and uh, eventually it all gets worked out yes yes but we're actively getting all the other the trades on board uh we just start we're we're started pricing the job out obviously our pricing is is quite impeccable and we're getting good trades to come to the job and uh yeah that's it so but 
Mm. Go ahead. Do you have a question? No, I was just going to say, I don't know if I mentioned uh, this to you last time, Your Honor, when it was uh, uh, Bill Brio was on, because he lives in Orangeville now. My wife and I spent some time a couple of weeks ago. That street, Broadway in Orangeville, I'll tell you, it's a cool, cool street. Neat bars and restaurants, a great vibe to it. Nice vibe. And these smaller communities now that are allowing and having condos built, it's the best of both worlds because you get the condo life. You get this cool little downtown area, but you're not part of the big bad city. It's it's pretty cool lifestyle for people. Yeah, and you're up in uh, that area, which yeah. is full, full of nature and, and proximity mm-hmm. to like a bunch of trails and yep. cool things to do. Mm-hmm. And you're not stuck in the city all the time, so... Well, again, if you want to go to the city. If you want to go to the city, you yeah, can it's go not to that far. Yep. Uh, again, mm-hmm. illuminating the uh, mysterious condo market, <clears throat> and he's even got his own hat now. It says uh, just, but it says "Building Toronto Skyline." Are you trying to say that it should say "Maca Making Condos Great Again"? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to borrow that idea. I think. Yeah, because that was, <laughs> you know, seriously. He's, Borrow some of the great ideas um, MTCA, from MTCA, uh, MTCA, making Toronto condos great. Oh, fantastic! MTC, yeah, just see MTGCA. <laughs> Any way you slice it, my friend, we're excited to have you as part of our uh, as part of our group, and it, and always uh, a pleasure. And yeah, I just want to I just want to say I was featured in uh, stories. That's a big. Uh, uh, online real estate news uh, uh, website, and uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the the uh, cost of not doing business in Toronto with with the condo market mm. and how huge it is in terms of an impact of uh, hmm. in the economy. So that was uh, that was done. That was on May 29th, and it was written by Josh Sherman and Stories. That's uh, Stories dot com. Or stories.ca, one of the two. I'm sure you'll find it. But uh, it, sh- it it really focuses on the major impact to the GT lo- GTA local economy. We've had m- drastic uh, decline in condo sales. For every thousand units, they create 1,600 jobs. Those mm-hmm. are jobs that we're losing right now. And uh, you know, condos contribute to pro- approximately fi- 100 condos contribute to approximately 50 companies involved. Wow, 400 million dollars is removed from the economy for every 1,000 units built. So oh, you can nice. see that it's uh, right now it's a big impact to our economy. People, I, I, I mean, people are still busy in our industry because you know you start a condo two years ago or one year ago, and then you've got to keep you got to keep going. You can't so you can't put on the brakes. Yeah. So. Very, uh, very interesting things happening in our industry right now. Don't forget about my uh, author series reception at the Albany Club. Mm-hmm. That's that's and that's going to be in September. And uh, yeah, and don't forget to visit us at at uh, www.fusioncorp.ca if you're interested in building your all home. great things. Fusioncorp.ca and, and you're selling five hundred dollar caps and five hundred dollar caps mm-hmm. signed oh. by you know t- t- signed by Toronto Skyline Trump. And uh, <laughs> listen, yeah, 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 don't give me that uh, label. I might not get another. Job no, again. no, no. We're just teasing, my friend. <laughs> You're a beautiful angel. Thanks, uh, Nikki. Appreciate you. Hey, guys. All right, buddy. Okay, hey, buddy. Take it easy. Uh, Nick Ines, go to uh, 60onbroadway.com to find out more about that and fusioncorp.ca. We'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao. Can't talk it over. I'm taking the loss. It told me. I believe you're up today, or do you have one more that you'd like to uh, tell the people about? Oh, the retirement Sherpa. Uh, Tim Niblett is a portfolio manager. Raymond James, a member of the Canadian Investors Protection Fund. Tim will be by on Wednesday, uh, you know, to give us an update on uh, that world. And remember, if you have a portfolio and you want someone to have a second look at it, Tim's your guy. No obligation, no cost. Uh, Tim or Jay will have a look and let you know uh, if you're on track for what you need and want or whether you're not. And from uh, there, you can make a decision which way you want to go. It's a great service they provide. Uh, Several Humble and Fred listeners have taken advantage of it and uh, have benefited from it. He's the Retirement Sherpa, retirementsherpa retirementsherpa.ca. Little music from uh, Spenny's girlfriend, Amelia Maxwell. I love this song. Um, now, we don't.
don't normally do emails until our last show of the week. And by the way, a little programming note for you Humble and Fred people. Uh, we didn't work yesterday, as you know, because uh, I had uh, I went golfing, which I do occasionally, as you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yesterday was a 27-hole tournament at the uh, site of the Canadian Open this year. Hamilton Golf and Country Club. It was a great day. Yesterday might be one of the nicest days in terms of both temperature and lack of wind. Where were you yesterday? Uh, were you in the well, city? A lot of it I spent in the Apple store, but last night I went to Johnny Slabshot's uh, baseball game, and I said to my, my wife uh, more than once, oh, man, it's a beautiful evening. Yeah. Beautiful evening. <laughs> You know, it really was. I kept waiting, you know, because we we started to play twenty seven holes. You need to start early, so we started at nine. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you sort of this a little bit of weather PTSD here in the GTA the last couple of months. You just keep waiting for okay, when is it going to get cloudy? <laughs> when when is it going to start mm-hmm. blowing? And uh, honestly, it was one of the nicest days in terms of overall comfort. You know, it was hot but not too hot, etc. Um, anyway, but so this week programming note. We are going to do a thir- a rare summertime Thursday show. And if you want to get your email on the program, you can, Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. If you also want to enter to hang out at our patio party on 7th of August, go ahead. But the reason I bring up emails is uh, Jeffrey Kilborn was listening to our program this morning. As you can do, by the way, if you want to watch us on Facebook, we're live every morning at 7.30 Eastern. So I've seen this clip. It's a clip from Curb Your Enthusiasm. And the uh, subject is Larry goes to a yoga class. And I've seen this clip. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, watch this from the one minute mark onward. I like to think Howard is our own little Larry, (laughs) which people have said, you know, from time to time. Yes. So um, here's Larry at the end. Now now that you know, they always say namaste. Right. Now, here's the thing you don't know. The class is supposed to say namaste in return, mm-hmm. but I don't. I'm just, you know, I'm, Why? I, I, I just never felt that comfortable. You know, I, I used to back in the early days, but now I just sort of, I don't say it or I'll just mumble. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I'll just mumble something. So I found, and when, when I saw this, when it came out at the end of whatever the season was, I was like, oh yeah, I get this. Uh, it don't. I'm not a namaste guy. I don't participate in group activities. You know, I don't, I don't sing the birthday song, happy birthday to you, and all that. So, you know. Namaste means the light within me greets the light within you. There is no light within me. That's the only problem there. Well, why don't you try it? Why don't you just try a little namaste and see how it feels? I know how it's going to feel. I'm going to feel like an idiot. Well, yeah. no one's here now. Why don't you just try it? <laughs> My third eye is watching. It's not how the third eye works. You know how the third eye works, huh? I've studied it for many years. Is that yeah. so? Yeah, watch. Here's what I think about the third eye. See, so, look. It's I'm disrespectful. It. it doesn't hurt at all. It's, it's disrespectful. Look, it's disrespectful. Yeah. Just don't do that to your third eye. I wouldn't do it to my two eyes, the real eyes. Right, right. But third eye's real. No, there's, but, no, there's but, no imaginary eye here. Are you familiar with etiquette? Oh, by the way, can I say something? Mm-hmm. It's really hot in here. Well, it's hot yoga. Does it have to be this hot? I mean, it's, you know. Larry, you're here to be a part of our spiritual community. No, I'm here because I have a bad hamstring. If you're not going to acknowledge the light within yourself, then you can leave. You can leave and you cannot come back. Wow. Very uh, unyogi-ish of you. Get the fuck out. <laughs> you just made my day. <laughs> Namaste! That's, that's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck get the out. Fuck out. Did, he, did he say you just made my day? Yeah, he just made my day. <laughs> <laughs> you can get the fuck out. Oh, it's so funny. good. Mm-hmm. That's me at yoga, Dan. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Mr. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's great. <laughs> He's Everybody's coughing, coughing on the not, show right now. I had to turn my mic off because I had like a... Six uh, sneeze attack. Um, I was very uh, proud of myself, though, Fred. Yeah. Um, now I, I, you know, I told you about the uh, yoga Karen encounter. Yes. But recently, while we were gone last Thursday, I played a golf tournament. I know you're hard to believe. 
And uh, this is going to be a long callback, but I'll, I'll make it as short as possible. I played golf with a couple of brothers. Okay. And I've, they're part of my sort of senior golf universe. I've seen them at a diff- bunch of different tournaments. There's really, really nice guys living well. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I knew there was a lot of brothers in the family. Mm-hmm. And, but I didn't know how many. And they are two of ten children. Yes. And wow. you know... You know, in the past, I've had some issues with the large families. You remember I had a woman get very mad at me? Yeah, what'd you say to her? <laughs> something about one of them dying? No, I, I don't know if oh. you know this story, Dan. She was a, a girlfriend of my friend Dave's, and I was over at Dave's birthday party, and when she revealed to me that this is a bunch of, a bunch of people, she said, oh, yeah, you know, there's 10 kids in our family. I'm like, 10 kids? How many died in childbirth? You know, <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> right? Because you know, back in the pioneer days, you'd have ten children yeah. to get, uh, you know, to help out with the farm, but some right. of them would die. Yeah, she did not Didn't like. Go over well. no. <laughs> she did. She did not like that, Dan, and uh, and got really mad at me. In fact, that went on <laughs> of for. A, she didn't. That went on for a long time. Remember when that her sister came up to you at a or a friend of yours at a hockey game and said, "Humble Howard's a fucking dick," <laughs> you know. Remember that. <laughs> so here I was with a group of people, two uh, two people at a golf tournament. They told me they had ten children in their family, and I just went, "Oh, that's nice," <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I was very proud of myself. I never, I didn't mention that's a lot of kids. Some of them must have died in childbirth. Oh, when yeah. I hear that, I just think of the woman. Can you imagine? Oh yeah. So ten kids. So you're pre- you're, you know you're pregnant what, nine times to ninety months of your life, but all the months around that, that's a big chunk of your life dealing with that. <laughs> that's My like goodness. yeah, it's too many. And and really, mm. how do you keep track of them all? How do you uh, how do you feed them? How do you clothe yeah. them? You get to oh, and when you get and and you, when you get to kid four or five. I mean. Mm-hmm. Aren't, isn't enough? It's gunny sacks. You use gunny sacks. Is that you know, what the farmers did? Yeah, the farmers, and you tie tie a you know rope around the waist for the belt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Send, yeah, that's send right. them out in the fields, right? Um, do you want to do you want to vent more anger at Joe Rogan, or do you want to save that till tomorrow? I don't. It's up to you. I'm 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 happy either way to play well, this only clip. It's you know I'm fascinated. No, I'll play it while we have it. Get, let's get the vitriol out of the let's way. Let's get it all. So uh, this is uh, Joe Rogan on his program. Well, I, I, I would just say, you know, we're fascinated. We're, we're bewildered, you know, that half that country could still support um, Donald Trump. And Joe Rogan, like, bar none, the number one podcast in the world, he goes on for three and four hours every day. And so much of what he says and refers to his bullshit, he pulls out of his ass. Like, he's not, he's a dummy, as far as I'm concerned. Whenever I drop in, it's like, this guy is stupid. And it's the number one podcast in the world. Anyway, this was brought to my attention. Again, he's talking about Canada because Joe knows about all the countries in the world. Mm -hmm. Joe's, he's like Trump. He's brilliant. He knows everything. But here's what he had to say about Canada. Uh, here we go. I love Canada. Vancouver is one of the most beautiful. I don't cities. go to Canada anymore. But ever? I, no. You won't do a gig there? there? Not why that guy's president. Fuck you. Yeah, or but that, whatever but, he is. Prime these minister. People are fans of yours. They want to see you. Fuck still. you. Get rid of that guy. I'll come back. I just don't trust any of it up there. Yeah. I just think they're, they're they're so far into tyranny right now. Like the laws that they're passing, the shit that they're doing, they're, the erosion of people's rights. Like, I don't want to support it. Mm. I think it's fucking horrible. Yeah, but I think a lot of people there just want to laugh. I think people... Yeah, the guy he's talking to is one of my famous fa- favorite comics, a guy named Sam Morell. Need a laugh. You know? Oh, yeah. They definitely need a laugh. Oh, yeah. They're, they're in the We're middle desperate. of a full-blown communist takeover. <laughs> yeah. By the way, did you, I, uh, that was news to me. Did you guys know that? We're in the middle of a full blown communist takeover <laughs> yeah in the tyranny thing just, I love. Yeah. If, yeah what is if you tyranny look at the again? definition of tyr- tyr- well that's like one leader at the top you know enforcing all his strict laws on the people mm, oh yeah which isn't even our system of government joe i'll bet you a thousand dollars that joe could not fucking explain the parliamentary system has no idea right. what it's like but hey right here we go scary spot yeah it's scary 
Yeah, it's so scary up here. But it used to be amazing. <laughs> I, I used to say that Canada's 20% less douchebags. Like, the people are 20% nicer than most people that you meet in America. They're, yeah, they're polite. That's, that's why they get roped into all this shit. That's why they get roped into hate speech laws, because they want to be kind. They want to be good people. And they don't realize, like, compelled speech has a terrible ending. It always ends in communism, because someone mm-hmm. has to compel that speech. Who does? The people with guns. And they tell you what to do. Yeah. And then you have yeah vi- where are all the people with guns telling us what, what to do? What, what, what the <laughs> fuck is he even talking about? I have no this idea. Is so how do you listen to that and think, oh, I'm going to listen to Joe again tomorrow because he's good. <laughs> Wait, fuck. I will say this. Uh, I, I've got, I went through a lot of the comments below that mm. post, and uh, one mm-hmm. of the first ones is uh, from a woman who says, I'm just proud to be a citizen of a country where women have body autonomy. Next. <laughs> <laughs> But but I will wow. say this: there are hundreds and hundreds of comments supporting him. Well, of course, just hundreds. Um, it's quite it's quite and and from Canadians too. And remember, this is a guy that endorses has endorsed Donald Trump now. Yes, the guy that is lining things up to you know punch holes in their democracy. Anyway, it's just the whole thing is just stupid. And he just says so many stupid, dumb things that it's. Uh, but but, man, but I just find it fascinating. He's got a, the following he does. I think it's the scatless. I think not only is it scary how dumb that is. And, and, and it's funny, too, because, again, I, I watch a lot of Sam Morell. He's a very, very funny comedian. And you can kind of see him. Yes. <laughs> like he's too smart. for He's yes. smarter than Joe Rogan. He really mm-hmm. is. And mm-hmm. he's just there on Joe Rogan's podcast trying not to rock the boat too much. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the comments are the thing that really frightens me. You know, couldn't agree more. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you need to watch and follow Pierre Polyev. This guy is fighting back against the tyranny. What? What tyranny? What tyranny. If anything, Trudeau hasn't done anything. That's the problem I have with him is nothing. <laughs> this tyranny he's talking about. My goodness. Well, this country is like well, the thing is, and, and from top to bottom better than the Trudeau. United. Something has done something because he's been the prime minister for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so that's the. Uh, <laughs> although there are some, you know, there the Internet. It's too bad. These people don't take their creativity and use it for good but some of it's pretty funny yeah. there's a picture of uh trudeau yeah <laughs> it's kind of fucking funny it's a picture of trudeau in a blue suit and he's kind of holding he's just kind of it's like uh-huh. they caught him in a he's sort of looking weird like a weird look on his face and the qu- caption is if tampons in the men's bathroom were a person <laughs> <laughs> yeah Here, oh man here's the thing though about this and where we are with politics and everybody p- picking a side and, you know, hiding behind their social media posts. I don't like Trudeau. I don't like him at all. But, you know, if I didn't have a brain in my head or I didn't take the time to look at issues and weigh certain things back and forth, I would jump, jump like all those morons that are, are commenting there. I would just jump on that bandwagon. And yeah, throws an asshole. Yeah, you know, yeah, way to go, Joe. But what he says is just so untrue <laughs> that how do you, you know what I mean? How, how do you jump on that bandwagon if you're equipped with a, like a, 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 a tiny a bit of knowledge? Yeah. You, you, you can't because it's bullshit. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I bet you uh, you'd be very, very surprised at the amount of people that Agree with everything that he just said. Anyway, let's uh, can we end mm-hmm. on, can we end this program mm-hmm. uh, on a uh, on a more positive note? And who and who better to bring the positivity than Daniel J. Gebert Duran the mm-hmm. Third? But first, this message. For my last email, we are on board. Looking for a fast break from working so hard? When you're ready to box out some time for fun, you know it's time to play. It's easy to find your next favorite game at Bodog.net. We make getting the latest basketball odds and free sports tips a slam dunk. Visit Bodog.net today. Hashtag make a play. And now this. Now, here's to a fella named Dan Duran, a hell of a guy with a hella big wang, the quintessential anchor man. His voice is nice and low. Ho! 
And around the anchorman comes As has for credentials he has none Can't tell a headline from his bum But his voice is nice and low Dand around the anchorman's here He's prone to falling off his chair But he's got a big wang so he don't care And his voice is nice and low My voice is nice and low and now live from Lakeside, where I will be uh, just a few short days from now, I'll be staring out at the lake, as I like to do, from the cozy confines of the new palatial trailer belonging to movie anchor man, Daniel Duran. Well, Friday marked the 50th anniversary of Man on the Moon. Opening ceremonies in Paris start this coming Friday. Jasper, Alberta is evacuating as part of an exciting 2024 forest fire season. And the LCBO mm-hmm. opens for booze buying today. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about something easy and happy, like we've been talking about me doing, the Northern Lights. Mm. You know, oh, there, was a, yeah. mm. there was a geomagnetic storm that happened. It's a G2 storm arriving tonight, last night. An immense halo CME, coronial mass ejection, uh, happened, it erupted from the sun, and it's on t- its trajectory towards Earth. And it's currently forecast to arrive in the early hours tomorrow morning so tonight go to bed maybe wake up at about two o'clock and that's when the best viewing begins wow. if it actually happens the way they say it was so that's uh, another chance the last huge uh, northern light experience that was happening around here totally missed it saw all kinds of crazy pictures about the northern lights and uh, i don't know did you see in toronto howard I, I didn't see anything, Dan. I don't. Uh, oh, I don't right. see oh, yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm embroiled in street fighting most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Fred. Of what course, were you trying yeah. to say there? How would you see it with the city lights? It would be pretty difficult, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, with the the, uh, the light pollution in the in Toronto is pretty pretty severe. So you per- perhaps not. But I mean, I, I thought I did hear that some people in Toronto did see it last time around. Well, they're just lying. Yeah, um, they're just big city liars. Mm-hmm. That's fake news. <laughs> That's fake news. Um, fake juice. Although a couple of times over the years up on my dock at the Tin Palace, I remember several years ago, there was a Northern Lights show we laid on the dock and watched. It was amazing. And meteor showers also are something else. Were you on mushrooms? Or, no, I should have been. Did you get some mushrooms, some psilocybin, or psilocybin, as the kids call it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Dan, that's what we should do this week, and we just get all fucked up on mushrooms. Is that okay, according to your medical uh, doctors? Probably. <laughs> I, uh, I've done mush- I mean, I did. I've done microdosing mushrooms. Uh, I think in the time since I've had my heart issues, but uh, right, I haven't done mushroom mushrooms. Well, I'm really that. That's really the. Uh, a lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are getting back into mushrooms. Isn't isn't that uh, our guest tomorrow? Yes. Well, partly we'll tomorrow. We're going to speak to uh, a former uh, NHLer named uh, Kyle Quincy. He's a, a friend of my son's. Is he now? They, they went to high school together, yes. Well, he's uh, also played with the Detroit Red Wings. Yep. Um. He has stints in L.A., Detroit, Colorado, New Jersey, Columbus, and Minnesota. Well, that will be good because he's also developing. Um, because of how many concussions he's had, he has uh, been active in the uh, in the. He's, he's living in Colorado now, so the Telluride Mushrooms uh, movement. Anyway, we're going to talk to him about how uh, psilocybin is helping people with uh, mental issues. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's uh, It's going to be very here's, I got his uh, His dad gave me a hat It's called Do Good Ranch There it is See that You know what oh, I'm you doing you met his dad Well that's how I got Kyle on the show Oh isn't that funny And you had no idea That he was friends with dad I didn't In fact that kid Maybe has partied in the room That I'm sitting in right now Come on now I probably I don't know Well his father's a very good golfer Marty Quincy mm-hmm. is his name And um and I was in a tournament with him. I know you'll find that hard to believe. It plays in tournaments. Mm-hmm. About a month ago, and we were talking about his son, and this is the uh, hat. And what I'm going nice. to do, fellas, is I was going to surprise you, Dan Duran. And uh, tomorrow I'll be wearing the hat during the interview. Right. <laughs> and, uh, cool. And then on Friday, I'll be bringing this hat to you. Oh. This is a very well, Dan Duran a- trailer hat, I thought. 
It is. You know? Well, there you yeah. go. When you're like doing that. when you're doing your projects, you can walk around with this. To keep yeah, you need a little uh, a visor protection sometimes when you're doing too Exactly. Many when you're doing right. projects, I mean, I don't know because yeah. I don't do projects, <laughs> but I imagine when one is doing a project, one needs to keep the sun off their head. Right. Um, um, as a way of, you know, another source of revenue, Dan's looking all the time. He's agreed to become the part-time shit sucker <laughs> at the... Um, <laughs> At the park, and he can wear that hat while emptying my Blackwater tank. Can you imagine yeah. if you're lucky enough for uh, to have your shit sucked out on a day that Dan's working? Like you yeah. could get his autograph. You yes. could uh, have yourself your yeah. pictures taken with him. Yeah, uh, this guy. This guy was in Anchorman or was in uh, Iron Man, and he's sucking up my Blackwater. <laughs> it's yeah, all very all exciting. Fun. Yeah, you get to drive a tractor when you do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I we're going to uh, we're going to be talking to Kyle Quincy tomorrow. Uh, it'll be very interesting because, uh, uh, yeah, more and more. I mean, it started with our friend Todd uh, Shapiro from Red Light Holland when we talked about the effects, the health effects of psilocybin mushrooms, or whatever, on people's right. mental health and and well being is uh, it's going to it is going to overtake marijuana. In terms of uh, the discussions and, and people having these conversations about well-being and wellness. Yes. Um, again, so much, so many people getting, you know, natural relief from that stuff. Yep. You just wonder how long it's going to take. Well, It'll anyway. Be, uh, to that's, become part of the landscape to be legal because it's really still not right? well it's in yeah i mean although there are now mushroom stores i was driving up yeah. uh, queen street there's m- mushroom stores like there used to be well they're sort of uh there used to be the yeah. dispensaries or whatever where mm-hmm. you can go and get some microdosing. daniel how do you know it's a mushroom store it says mushroom store on it <laughs> seriously yeah no some of them on, do yeah. yeah mushroom store yeah just, pretty much yeah. just mushrooms that's a lot of words I mean, okay. letters, right? Some of them say yeah. psilocybin something or other, but yeah, there's a. I don't think they're hiding it. There are, they, or they're, they're hiding in plain sight if they are. Right. Hmm. So um, they're, uh, they're doing this like in between the, uh, the rub and tugs and the. Uh, no, I'm not even talking about on my street. I'm talking about up in Parkdale, up in uh, just uh, east of Roncesvalles. Oh, okay. I uh, guess there's people, you know, pushing the envelope, testing the laws, and uh, like they did with marijuana. Yeah, exactly. In the early days. Yeah. You know, there, there was a, a time, a couple of years before legalization, I used to go into uh, what's a cabbage town all the time or whatever, and uh, there was you could there was three or four of those dispensaries just open. They would get some of them would get uh, raided, and they would just pop up again. Uh, all right, Dan, uh, we're going to have you uh, finish this program as you as you began it. Of course, we appreciate uh, Nick Ines, and we, uh, it was great having uh, John Salenza, formerly of BioSteel, now of QuenchHydration.com. And uh, we're also happy to have you with us, humble and fred people, as always. Oh, this well, episode quickly, of- and don't forget, oh, hate, right. hate, and more hate. Oh, just one thing, though. I, <laughs> yes. I want to say for <laughs> one tomorrow. more thing. One more thing to hate. It's not about hate. I had Aww. this thing about five ways to make yourself happier. So maybe we'll do that tomorrow. We'll lay off the hate, the vitriol. Right. Disgust. And uh, I'll tell you five ways to make yourself happy. Can't wait. It's like the old <laughs> boom show. Coming up next, yeah. five yeah, ways to make yeah. yourself happier that don't yeah. include jerking it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this episode. Dan, I have a question. When you, when you do jerk it, is it, is it like take you all day? Because it's just it's a fucking. Does your arm ever get tired? You're like, Five please, an hour, somebody yeah. help. That's always staying in shape. That's always that's how you. Shape. That's why his arm is so fucking strong. You can't even see the end of it. <laughs> For the curvature of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, this is it now, for okay. real. <laughs> okay. 
This episode of Humble and Friend was brought to you by the Retirement Sherpa, the Chambers Plan, Boron One, Bodog, and Lender's Choice Mortgages. For contests and comments, we read all of the emails. Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. Please tell us what you think. And please rate the podcast. Tell your friends about it. And, you know, whatever else you think you would think of, share the show somehow. For Humble and Fred, from the Bill Chaput Zoom Theater, I'm Dan Duran. And remember, prosecate the day with enthusiasm. And enjoy every goddamn day. Clap your hands. Where's that?